guys, in this video, we're going to be talking about spiritual ego and spiritual bypassing. You don't want to miss this one. So spiritual ego and spiritual bypassing tie closely in with one another, all in and around how we're going on our spiritual awakening journey. Usually people start with this idea that they want to be the highest vibrational expression of themselves. They want to be happier in their day-to-day -day life and free themselves from the traps of the mind, the fears, the worries, the insecurities. And often then what happens is we get inspired and we start to seek out knowledge, seek out people and information that align with our perspective on spirituality. And this gaining of knowledge and this coming together of experiences can lead us to sometimes get so caught up in the consumption of information and knowledge that we actually avoid the implementation and actually working on ourselves. It's easier to read another book, watch another video, go on a yoga trip or whatever it may be, than it actually is to go right in there and look at where there might be some unconscious beliefs, self-limiting beliefs, painful beliefs tied in with self-worth, self-esteem, might be limiting our prosperity, they might be tied in and around relationships, etc. You get the ideas, or then emotionally, there's anger and trauma and grief buried within, and it's just easier to read another book or do another course than it is and go and face that, right? Yeah, it's really important that we actually go into our own healing journey before we serve to another person. We can't feel from an empty cup. And a lot of us get um, caught in this spiritual ego, this level of spiritual awakening where we have so much consciousness and education in our brain, but we've never opened up our heart. And so, you know, the thought of becoming a shaman or becoming an energy healer is like really special and exciting but we haven't done the inner work. And so we, we're helping another person. And it's really important that we do the inner work because the messages that we're getting from the divine could be distorted because of the emotional imperfections within us that we haven't conquered yet. So if you're wondering then, I wonder if I'm doing this or have I been doing it in certain areas, some of the ways you can tell is if you are talking down things that have happened in your past. You know, oh, look, I have a rough, I had a rough childhood, but, you know, it didn't really affect me that much for some reason. You know, like talk, playing down the need to go in there and feel through something or putting a overly silver lining on past experiences and go, oh, yeah, I went there and did that and learnt the lesson. Yeah, I know that. I know that already. I've done that. <laughs> and whenever, because it's not that simple, right? If you've done it, you realize that you, while you can take a lot of the heat out of it, you can be learning uh, and understanding a lesson from a traumatic experience for a long time. It continues to be a wonderful catalyst for your soul to grow and evolve. Like one of the big lessons that you came in in this lifetime for over and over, it doesn't just end like that. This thing plays out, you see it from different perspectives and you're peeling the onion. It's crusty and it's difficult at first and as you move in, you see it from different perspectives, experience different aspects of it, integrating it, of course, into the heart, the center and learning to not just intellectually understand an mm. event or a false belief mm. and how it's playing out, but go into the feeling of that as well. Yeah. yeah, and, you know, just being mindful of what's coming into your life. Like the divine is trying to help you ascend, yes, and you are on the, on the right track and you are here to be of service, yes, but you have to, you know, do that healing first. So if there's a negative situation that keeps coming into your life and it's like a block, a block, a block, it's like listen to the block because you haven't gone into it. There's more work to be done in that block. The divine will keep bringing you certain consciousnesses 
in your day, in your path. And if it's not flowing, if clients aren't flowing in, your vibration isn't ready to serve. And so a lot of us think that, you know, yeah, we're all good. I'm healed. I can help other people and we're here for the mission, but they've, they've spiritual bypassed their own journey. They haven't done the learnings and the lessons. And it's important that we do because then we can really feel into what the other person is going through when we are holding space for them. We can understand that pain and, you know, what they've gone through at a really deep level and have so much compassion and love and advice for them. You know, having the advice is the, is the key for us to help another person. Um, yeah. So spiritual ego now. We've come across a couple of people in our journey and we didn't really know much about the spiritual ego until we came across um, a certain person and um, we've seen a few and that's normal, but it was for us to learn about spiritual ego. We had no idea about spiritual ego. Hey, at the time we were like, oh, there's an ego thing going on and we've got an ego. And yeah, this was very loud. The healer was very loudly and um, spiritual, you know, in her spiritual ego. And she thought that her thing was the best thing and there was nothing else. And she was the kind of queen of the, of the planet and she was going <laughs> to solve everyone's problems. And yeah, she, she took her power in her ego and basically said that we're, we were all, you know, nothing compared to her. So watch out for those people. Someone thinking that they're better or bigger than you or they've got the next best thing. Um, that is kind of leaning into that spiritual ego. So be mindful and aware of that one. Well, the ego is like the underlying point of all of this to realize that it is there. And when you identify it in the beginning, right, you're learning how the ego is playing out in the money or in the greed or the anger or the jealousy or the bitterness. It is underlying and behind that, the constant seeking of recognition or things outside ourselves to feel fulfilled. It's all feeding the ego. Mm. But as we move on to the spiritual path, what can happen is the ego then has to be sneaky, right? So it, it finds more and more cunning ways to yeah. still be involved in our life in some way. And what better way than the spiritual seeker trying to find enlightenment and be content. And if we're not careful, once again, creeps in. Oh, I'm doing such a good job. Wow, I get so connected. Oh, my goodness, I'm getting so many downloads. Oh, I've had so many beings come in. And I this and I that. And as soon as we identify with the I, oh, whoops, we're back at that role again. Back and in separation. Talking it up. That's it. So ego is the idea identification with the self. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. That's happening because of me. So be aware of, yes, the spiritual ego and then the patterns and how things are playing out in life. Because when we tie this back to the spiritual bypassing, you can see how if a person has got relationship troubles over and over again, health troubles over and over again, work or prosperity or business troubles over and over and over again, it is the law of attraction trying to bring up opportunities for the person to see the lesson, learn it, and work through it. So guys, whenever you're experiencing anything in your life that is uncomfortable, someone who's rude, someone who is unreasonable, some sort of event that doesn't go to plan and it seems like it's a big disaster, that event is about you. It's not about them. <laughs> this was a massive concept for me to get my head around. It's like, but they're such a jerk. <laughs> but it's like, well, what did that bring up in me? Because if, if I was in the right state, if some clown wants to come in front of me in the traffic, it's no big deal. I just ease back and let him in. Mm. I just kind of smile. Oh, 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 mate, it's in a hurry. It doesn't trigger me at all. If I go to look at this jerk, you know, look at this person. How rude. Bang, give him a horn, you know, out the window with the shake. What's that triggering? Triggered something in me. See, the, tr the reaction mm. rather than the response. Mm. So we're being aware of self, learning to respond rather than react. Well, it's a reaction to an action that's already occurred in your life, in your right. childhood. So it's right. reacting out for you to learn the lesson, right? That's right. Yeah. So washing everything through your heart compass, like when you're coming across someone, you're not too sure, you know, wash it through the heart compass. By their works, you shall know them. And we are constantly ego checking. Like we don't want to be like um, ego. We're constantly ego checking each, checking each other, 
staying humble and lesson and learning the lessons as we go and being really clear and like watching what's coming in, what's not flowing. It's like every day it's work. Like every day it's like, why did I get triggered then? Oh, I'm just feeling frustrated. And this happened and it's a reaction to something else where we felt that in our life, maybe in our childhood. So constantly self observing, constantly, you know, self uh, watching and uh, watching how we play out, how our character is playing. Is it in flow and peace and like happiness or is it reacting to that, you know? And as you reflect on yourself, it's so much easier to understand others. Mm. You know, that, that beautiful saying, forgive them, Father, they know not what they do. It's often because you were there. I was there. I was the guy, right? I was cutting in or I was reacting or I was, you know, whatever it might be, the loud person at the party, the person who thought they were so good because they'd done so much. Mm. So you don't get triggered. You don't go, oh, my gosh, I can't stand them. They're, they're, they're so obnoxious. It's like it doesn't bother you. You kind of just smile and yeah. go, oh, yeah, they're playing out that one. I remember that. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you just so, – it's so much easier to understand and accept and, of course, not project. Mm. And that is just the process of being more present. And we learned that with that, with that when we learned the ego with that um, healer. Yeah. We were like, oh, my God, I can't believe it's like that. And, da, 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 da. and like judging. And then we moved into, oh, they don't realize what they're doing and – Forgive them, forgive them, Father. They don't know what they do. And we had so much compassion. And, you know, it was just really nice to learn the lesson. It's a beautiful journey learning all of this. And, you know, reach out if you have any questions about the spiritual ego or spiritual bypassing. Um, keep doing the inner work. You're doing such a good job. We love you dearly. We're all here together as a beautiful army to bring light to the planet and shift the consciousness. Um, yeah, so congratulations on all the work that you're doing. And we'll talk to you again really soon. Thank you.